Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, guys, like the channel, show your support. Uh, all we ask is take a second of your time, click that big thummy thing, and hopefully, uh, again, I could continue to provide uh, value for you. If you are uh, interested in Pivots, guys, there's a link below. 30 days, you'll quickly uh, see if it's a good fit for you. So, a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, uh, this afternoon, you got earnings uh, all over the place. Let's get into uh, the good, the bad, and the eh, not so much. So let's start off with the good. Uh, Google uh, came out with earnings uh, this afternoon. Uh, pretty good numbers, right? Pretty good numbers all across the board. Uh, today, it finally got out of this channel here above the 169.20 area. Uh, that was its natural pivot. Uh, after hours, the stock is doing uh, very, very well, uh, as you can see. And these are the particulars. You know, Google pretty much beat on all their metrics, top line, bottom line, 12% uh, on their searches, 12% on your YouTube ads. Uh, cloud, again, continues to be the driving force, up uh, 35%. So they did very, very well. And if you look at the daily chart right now, right now in the stock, uh, put in a high of 79 in the after hours. And again, if you are uh, believing in the theory of opening ranges of anything, well, it kind of works for earnings as well. So again, I don't know what time you will be watching this broadcast, but Google's going to need, need to get back above that uh, 179 area. And if it gets, if it starts building above 179 area uh, after the conference call, I mean, there's a lot of room up here. You know, you have a lot of room up to start filling in this whole gap. And if you guys remember the the the, the seven uh, the, the July highs is all the way back up to like 191. So if there is a lot of momentum here, and you can see here why it's stopping in the 176 area. If you look at the chart right now, and again, let me get get rid of get rid of that bad wick. If you look at the chart right now, the stock is trading, is kind of having a little bit of battleground at 176. And the reason why is that's the linear regression line on the daily chart. So it's going to need to get back above this 176 area. It's going to need to confirm that opening range of 179. And if it does, uh, you could start seeing this whole big gap uh, start filling in uh, just the way Tesla did uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, then we got, you know, then we have Reddit. Okay. Uh, Reddit is going absolutely bonkers, okay? It's going absolutely bonkers, up 17% uh, after the close. They beat their EPS. Uh, they were forecasted to lose seven cents. They beat it by a net number of 16 cents. The revenue uh, missed its number, but who cares? When you go from, you know, when you go from a negative, uh, a negative perception to a positive perception, usually good things are going to happen. Reddit is uh, going out of its uh, mind. AMD, not so much. And here's kind of where people look at AMD. And this is why for years and years and years, uh, it's been kind of known as the redheaded stepchild of this group. Now, before you lose your mind and start you know, going crazy, hear me out. If you guys remember, some of you guys may be not old enough to remember, AMD was like on death's door like 10 years ago. It really was. It was on death's door. I remember this is one of the very, very last uh, into earnings plays I did. This was like seven to 10 years ago. Uh, the stock was trading at like five, seven dollars. And, you know, they came out with earnings. I was listening to the conference call. The only thing they did not say on their conference call at that time was that they were going out of business. It was such a terrible conference call, but they figured it out, right? They figured it out six, seven, eight years later. And AMD is gone, you know, the last five, seven years on a great, great run. However, it kind of just kind of died out today. If you look at their numbers, then they weren't terrible, right? They weren't terrible. Nobody could turn around and say they were horrible. Uh, but at the end of the day, nothing moved the needle. You had uh, earnings uh, in line with expectations. You have revenues, a slight beat. Uh, and then you have your client revenues, your gaming revenues, um, in mixed bag there, you had year over year of the client revenues, whatever the hell that means, up about 30%. But the gaming revenues were down about almost 70%, percent 
uh, year over year. And again, if you look at uh, AMD uh, after the close, it's not having a good time. AMD right now uh, after the close, not good, right? Not good at all. Uh, AMD right now after the close is getting shelled down about uh, twelve dollars on the day. And as you can imagine, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the semiconductors. Uh, all the semiconductors are getting pulled. Now, the question is going into tomorrow, well, what happens? Is Google going to pull everything up or is AMD considering how uh, how important the semiconductor group is? Are they going to pull everything down? We're getting a little bit of a clue here after the close. If you look at the really big heavy hitters, right? If you look at the very big heavy hitters here, you could see what's happening after the close here. Amazon, right? Amazon is taking... It's its toll, right? Excuse me, taking its cue from Google. It is absolutely exploding. If you look at Meta, right? Again, it's the same group. It's the whole point to click, right? Customer acquisition, ad revenue, right? It's flying. Even the salt of the earth, right? The swimmer, the number one swimmer in the septic tank, which is Snapchat, it's moving on to the upside as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see exactly what happens tomorrow with the rest of the group. Uh, Apple is down. I'm not sure why Apple down. I guess it's as more relatable to the semiconductor space uh, than uh, than to add click revenue. So I guess that's why it's down. But it's going to be very, very curious to see what happens tomorrow. Is Google going to bring everything up or is AMD and the heavy weighted semiconductors going to bring everything down? Again, that's kind of the open end question. Guess what? The fun doesn't end tomorrow, right? Tomorrow we have a lot of stuff coming up. You have, you have meta tomorrow, right? Let me just look at exactly what's happening for tomorrow. You got earnings from Meta, right? That's going to go play a Bitcoin. You got Microsoft earnings. We saw today 450 uh, weeklies coming in. Microsoft, again, surging uh, after the close on the Google numbers. And this is kind of what, I'm, what I mean by mixed bag. We got Coinbase reporting tomorrow. Obviously, Bitcoin, I think it was over 72,000. Microsoft tomorrow, Meta tomorrow. Again, we're seeing a lot of 600 calls uh, being better as that as well. Uh, and you have Starbucks for the caffeine junkie uh, in you. But the most important part is, guys, this is a, a very, very unique market, right? And, and again, years ago, if you had, you know, if you had a bellwether name uh, go absolutely nuts, everything would go nuts. If you had a bellwether name uh, go down, everything would go down. And now it's very specialized. Even some semiconductors that, you know, were tied into the group of AMD are actually behaving pretty, pretty well. Let me give you guys some names. Avago, right? If it could shake off, if it could shake off uh, tonight's weakness and starts taking out to, uh, to, uh, today's channel tomorrow, this thing could wake up. Look at Arm, right? Look at Arm as well. Arm went absolutely ballistic today, okay? Uh, again, this is a scenario that if it could shake off tonight's weakness, and if, you know, maybe AMD kind of puts up a little bit of fight off the map, Maybe this thing wakes up as well. There's a lot of names that I, you know, that I actually do like tomorrow that have nothing to do with beta. Let me give you guys some names. Um, let me give you guys some names that I am watching for tomorrow. Let me get, just go into my list. Let me go into my list here. Yo, look, look at look at look at SMCI. M SMCI again, kind of the same scenario as all these other semiconductors. SMCI is is very, very close. I know they report in a few days, but this thing is very, very close to getting above this channel here, right? It's actually, you know, it's only down, what, about 20 cents, 30 cents after the close, uh, considering how crappy the AMD's numbers are. Watch SMCI. If it could finally get back above the October highs, maybe this thing wakes up. Look at a name like uh, MBLY. Not a, you know, not a name that I follow but, you know, look how tight this channel is. It's trying to get back above the 50-day moving average. I know they report in a couple of days. Uh, we saw some uh, November $15 calls being printed uh, in the afternoon. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see that as well. Uh, look at a name like Wolf. Again, this has nothing to do with, um, you know, this has nothing to do with uh, the beta names. But look at a name like Wolf. Look how tight this formation is happening. Watch this thing. If it could get back above... Uh, the supply. Tesla, I am waiting for this bounce, right? I'm waiting for this bounce. Uh, I, I don't care how strong the earnings are. You'll always have one or two days that kind of orderly pulls back, aka profit taking into this orange line. You see this orange line is, that's the five-day moving average. The highest probability play um, 
to the exception of a reclaim of a 50-day moving average, is that initial uh, initial test of the rising five-day moving average after a runaway earnings beat. So I am watching this thing. I'm guessing we'll get a test of that five-day within the next day or so, okay, within the next day or so. But you can see it's very orderly. You can see huge volume on the way up and very, very slow volume on the way down. So I'm kind of watching that for the next couple of days. I'm also going to watch NVIDIA, right? I want to see how NVIDIA handles. Um, I want to see how NVIDIA handles uh, the 10-day moving average. But if it starts to hold the 10-day, I want to be a buyer as well. It, it held it briefly today and spiked up. I, I want to see if it kind of negates uh, the AMD call. It'll be very, very interesting to see. But the most important part, guys, again, Every single day, take it day by day, trade by trade. You, you don't need to trade every single day. Uh, every single day is not going to be this banner day that you're going to have ex huge expansion channels. And that's the most important part. I, I think the problem is social media has spun this narrative that every single day you wake up and there's something to do. That's the whole point of having a process. That's the whole point of trading very, very specific groups that you are comfortable with. A lot of times your group is not going to do anything and that's okay. Let them digest, let the price action kind of play itself out. And the most important part is let these things trade organically. Tomorrow, obviously, I will be playing uh, Google uh, into dips, right? Into dips. Um, obviously, when we watch this thing above uh, tonight's highs, I will be watching SMCI, see if they could shake off uh, the AMD news, watching Avago, watching ARM for the same reasons uh, as SMCI. And the most important part is just, again, take it day by day. Guys, got to run, everybody. Have a great night, everybody. Stay blessed, and I will see you all in the field tomorrow.